Hi, I'm Alice from Ataraxia Painting Studio and today we're going to take a look on how to achieve smooth blends on this guy, Solomon the Space Marine. Let's try this. <laughs> of our hobby that smoothness is something that looks really, really, really good in a model. But the truth is smoothness isn't the hardest thing to achieve. It's mostly a matter of patience and controlled brush strokes. There is a lot of controversy on this matter and I myself trying to understand when to use smoothness and when not to use it. It's, it's a big controversy, so I won't expand on this in this video because it's not really about that. But the point is that uh, I think it's something that every painter has to have in his uh, skill set, in his toolbox, to use uh, when he chooses to. So, what are the main components that helps us achieve that smoothness that we desperately are looking for? Well, it took me a while to understand the process and the techniques uh, you need to achieve it. And I'm gonna share with you my experience and what I learned from some of the best painters uh, here in my country, in Italy. So the key components are mostly two. Number one, having a structured process. And number two, technique. So what I mean when I say structured process? I mean that you must have a very orderly uh, palette with uh, the base coat at the center, three lights and three shadows. That's pretty much it. Regarding technique, well, they are the, pretty much the usual. First, layering, most important. The process that I'm basing this video upon is mostly layering. Then we have uh, some feathering and some wet blending and finally some glazing. It's important to master all this technique and especially to know when to use them. Exactly how you decide when to use smoothness and when to use texture. It's, it's the same thing. I really want to assure you that I'm really not a master at these techniques. I'm just learning like you are and I'm trying to share this learning process with you as better as I can. Learning from the best with patrons, with videos, and sometimes with private coaching. And this technique in particular, I have to give credit to Luciano Rossetto, who uh, taught me this technique. So thank you, Luciano. So now for the color that we're gonna use. The first one is uh, Cliff Green from Scale 75. Then um, Green Skin Flesh, also from Scale 75, and then we have the bright green called Goblin Flesh. So you can substitute this with Caliban Green, with Warpstone Glow, and with Mood Green uh, from GW. Uh, I like to add uh, this Chimera, Chimera Yellow, um, which you can substitute with uh, some yellowish tone from GW. Uh, it's gonna be important for the salamander uh, color scheme. So now I'm adding a few drops of water to the mixture, to each mix mixture. And then I'll take uh, an old brush and mix them well. Try to wash the brush between the mixes. Uh, I'm gonna put the mixes down below in the description. But mostly is uh, I increase the quantity of uh, the light color. Uh, going one drop, then two drops, and then pure color. But I'm gonna put the exact ratio in the description. You also have to eyeball it, because uh, even if I give you uh, the exact drops, and not all of you have the drop bottles uh, of paints, you're gonna have to adjust the hue and the value of the color and the, the shade of the color, whatever it's called. Remember, it's not important the brands of the, uh, of the colors, but I understand that sometimes it's uh, also 
useful to know exactly which color to use. So the consistency of the paint is going to be white diluted, but not glaze-like diluted. You don't want to have thick paint like in a base coat. It's going to be pretty diluted. We're going we're gonna to paint thin layers, reinforcing the layers as we go. So now it's time for the base coat. You can both use a regular brush, and it's going to take a while. As I demonstrated here, then I got tired and I used an airbrush because it's faster. But if you don't have an airbrush, don't worry, you're, you can do it with a brush, no problems. Mm, the base coat isn't a strong base coat. It's a pretty, pretty thin base coat. It's not strong. I did it with a base color, but it, the final result, the final look of the mini is darker than the color itself because I gave like maybe two or three layers of paints with an airbrush and you can do the same with a brush. For this particular case I didn't want to have a very strong uh, base coat so I, I gave less layers. So before starting any actual uh, painting you want to take in consideration that uh, the miniature isn't lighted in the same way all throughout the the miniature. You can imagine a, a kind of like a grayscale, so on the top is going to be lighter and on the bottom is going to be darker. And try to take a good look at your miniatures and try to figure out uh, what parts are going to be lighter and what parts are going to be darker. Also remind yourself that placing eyelets and understanding uh, lights and shadows and volumetry and all the related stuff is pretty much the hardest thing to do. Uh, at least is what I struggle most with. So don't be hard on yourself if you don't get the volumes right. I myself, not really sure if I always get them right. I, I know I've improved, but I don't always get them right. And there's always gonna be people that, who are not happy with your interpretation. Miniature world is about interpreting reality, is not copying reality. As artists we can interpret reality and uh, our piece as we want. But as I said before, you have to learn first how reality works in order to detach from that. So basic volumetry is something important for you to learn and I know it's complicated, I'm still learning and uh, maybe we'll learn together. Now we are ready to take the first light I always start with the light, but you can do the exact opposite, it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of what works for you. You're gonna figure it out for yourself. So here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna layer. We're gonna do layers. So uh, keep in mind that the first color you use, the first light or shadow you use, in this case the first light, uh, is gonna cover more surface than the second. and the same thing for the third. Keep in mind that on the upper part of the mini we're gonna boost lights with some yellow, the one from uh, Chimera that I showed you before. Uh, Add it both to the mixture and maybe even purish on the parts that we want to highlight the most, that we want to draw the attention towards. I'm gonna apologize in advance for maybe the shift in tones and volumes of the audio or the video and maybe my head in the middle of the shot. It's my first video, I'm not a video editor, I'm not good at the computer stuff, so I apologize in advance for that. And I'm not really very good at speaking in a microphone, so maybe sometimes I get too close and the voice goes up. Uh, it's gonna take a while to, for me to get used to this, so sorry for that. So here I'm reinforcing the first light with the, uh, with some with a couple of layers 
and remember that the layers act as filters so uh, the more you layer the more you will get a bright color Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the second uh, light. It's pretty much your choice if you want to start like stippling the colors or feathering the colors between uh, the layers. Sometimes I do it, so sometimes I, I don't do it. It's kind of your choice. It's the same process. do the same thing with the third light and then I'll start with the shadows. I will start with the first shadow, layering it, uh, trying to keep that base color in between the first light and the first shadow. The process is pretty much the same as you did for the light. Just try to keep space, uh, a space of the base color between the first light and the first shadow. As part of my process, I give way less uh, attention and uh, care uh, to the brush strokes in the shadows than in in the lights so I'm not gonna do any stippling or feathering I'm just gonna throw the general area where the shadows are gonna be but that's my process and remember and that's it I didn't show this color on the on the screen before but I'm gonna boost the the harshest uh, shadows with some uh, violet because our highlights are yellow and violet is the complementary color of yellow so I think it's gonna work well but it's gonna be very very subtle so if you want to skip that just feel free so when you're done with this process it's time to smooth it out so to smooth everything out I have learned a trick from the channel set on the miniature the color up or down in the palette can be both a shadow and a light. It's very hard to explain in words and it took me a long time to understand. Even with the master as Luciano Dorsetto, I'm a little bit slow. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna show you from the iPad, which is gonna be clearer. A really useful trick that can help you is to consider that, uh, for example, a second light can be a shadow of the third light. And in the same way, the second shadow can be a light of the third. Remember, as I said before, it's mostly a work of patience and having a structure process. Following this simple but hard to understand uh, concept uh, and logic, I think it's gonna be very easy to get everything together and smoothen it as you want to. Remember that, like any work of art, it's never gonna be really finished. There is always gonna be something that won't satisfy you as 100%. But uh, with time, you're gonna get better and you're gonna be able to be more satisfied. As far as the, the as far as the technique are concerned, are the usual wet blending, glazing, feathering, all the techniques. Try to be as clean as possible to control your brush strokes. Maybe do a little bit of stippling. With practice, you will achieve uh, the results you are looking for. As I said before, 
uh, smoothing is mostly about having the right process and using and being able to use the techniques that most of you already know how to use and I myself before having this structure process knew how to use but without that little trick that my master Luciano Rossetto taught me I wasn't able to achieve that smoothness. It's kind of good to have to be able to achieve the smoothness whether you want to use it or not. I don't think it's too important to get stuck on smoothness but it's a good skill to have as a painter and as an artist. Keep practicing and maybe try to find your own interpretation of this process. Maybe there is a slight variation that works better for you. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Like always, the usual boring YouTube stuff algorithm. So like this video, share with some friend and subscribe and click the notification bell if you want to get updated when uh, I post another video. So this is a final result. I don't have a cool spinning thing. It's, it's a miracle that I'm able to take decent pictures, so it's gonna take a while for me to have motion footage of my works, of my final works, looking very cool like the other YouTubers. Uh, but yes, I'm pretty happy with it. Consider I, ha I have a Patreon page. If you wanna uh, pledge a few dollars, that would uh, allow me to keep doing this and keep doing videos and free stuff. And also check out my Fiverr account on, on which you can get a commission from me. And that's it. Cheers, guys. Have a nice day.